Happy Friday, friends. I hope you've had a good week. I have a really nice story today. Yesterday's story was kind of short. Today's is kind of long, but I think you will enjoy it. It is called Valentine by Carol Carrick and illustrated by Patty Boma. Let's look on the back to see if we have any hints. Oh, we might see that picture again. Let's see. Look at this front. Isn't that adorable? Let's see what our story is about. Valentine. It was still dark when Mama put on her coat and hugged Heather goodbye. Mama worked in an office. Heather held on extra tight to her mother. Don't go, she said. It's Valentine's Day. Mama gave her a kiss. It's still work a day. It's still a work day for me, she said. Why do you always have to go to work? said Heather. I don't want you to go. I'm sorry, said Mama. I would rather stay home with you. I bet some of you feel like that sometimes too, don't you? Yeah, and that's okay. Let's see what happens to Heather. Heather and Mama were living with Grandma. Heather felt sad, excuse me, as she watched Mama drive down the road. It would be dark again before Mother got home. She held her blanket against her face. It smelled like oatmeal and Mama. Such a sad face on this special day, said Grandma. Help me make some cookie valentines. Grandma mixed butter and sugar. She added flour to make a soft dough. It felt like the clay Heather played with when she went to daycare. Grandma let Heather roll out the dough. It was flat. They cut out the cookies that looked just like Grandma's animals, chickens, cats, and sheep. Then they cut out a heart cookie for Mama's Valentine. Can we eat one now? asked Heather. No, said Grandma. They have to bake first. How many of you help bake cookies? Pretty fun, isn't it? Heather sighed. <sighs> she always had to wait. Wait for Valentine's Day. Wait for cookies to bake. Wait for Mama to come home. Grandma put the first two pans in the oven. Now, shall we make a quick check to see how Clover is doing? Clover was Grandma's favorite sheep. Grandma went out to the pen where the sheep was waiting to have her lambs. Heather followed slowly, dragging her blanket. Heather, come here! Grandma sounded excited. Clover had her babies, two of them. Already the newborn lambs were on their feet and getting milk from their mother. Heather peeked in at them. Grandma, look! There's one more! Behind Clover lay another little lamb. Heather reached through the fence and touched it. He felt stiff and cold, and he didn't move 
something was very wrong. Poor little thing, said Grandma. Heather clutched her blanket. Is he dead? She asked in a small voice. Grandma picked up the lamb. She held him next to her cheek the way Heather was holding her blanket. I think I can feel his breath, she said. Let's take him inside where it's warm. Grandma filled the kitchen sink with water and put the lamb in the warm bath. She held his head up so he could breathe. Are you washing him because he's dirty? Asked Heather. No, dear, I'm trying to get him warm. Bring me a towel from the bathroom. Heather hurried to get him his her own towel. Grandma lifted the lamb from the sink and wrapped him in a towel, but he still didn't move. Grandma, the cookies, I can smell them, said Heather. Heavens, said Grandma, I forgot. Good thing I have you to help me. She handed the lamb to Heather. Here, Grandma said, sit with the lamb by the stove while I rescue the cookies. I hope they haven't burned. So Heather got to be a helper and to hold the lamb sitting by the fire. Grandma took out the pan. Heather took or Heather could see that the cookies were too brown around the edges. I think they're tastier that way, said Grandma. But Heather didn't care about cookies now. She looked at the little lamb in her arms. His eyes were still closed, and he didn't move. Grandma, I don't want the lamb to die, Heather said. And she began to cry. Grandmother opened up the towel. The lamb's wet hair stuck to his wrinkled skin. Grandmother put her hand behind the lamb's front leg. She took Heather's hand and laid it on the same place. Heather could feel his heartbeat just barely. Grandma brought Mama's hair dryer from the bathroom and rubbed the lamb dry with the, f with the warm air. The lamb made the smallest sound and his head moved. Heather smiled. Can you hold him, Grandma said. Will I fix him some milk? Heather cradled the little lamb in her lap. There, there, she said, patting him the way Mom patted Heather when she was hurt. There, there. Then she covered him with her blanket. The blanket always made her feel better. Grandma filled one of Heather's old baby bottles with warm milk. She pushed the nipple into the lamb's mouth. His lips moved. He began sucking noisily, pulling at the bottle with his mouth. Under Heather's blanket, the lamb's tail wiggled. It made Heather laugh. When the milk was gone, the lamb lifted its head and made a bleeding sound. He began to struggle. 
He's looking for his mother, said Grandma. Will, we, will you put him back in the barn, asked Heather. She didn't want him to go. Not today, said Grandmother. We'll have to go on feeding him with a bottle. His mother has two other lambs to feed, and she's doing the best she can. Heather was glad. There, there, lamb, she said. I'll take care of you. Soon the lamb was asleep in the laundry basket. Grandma put the rest of the cookies in the oven. One of them was the heart-shaped cookie for Mama. When Mama came home, Heather showed her the lamb. That was when she knew what to call him. His name is Valentine, she told Mama. He needs me, Heather said proudly. His mother can't take care of him. Then Heather showed Mama the cookie cats and the chickens and the little sheep that looked like Grandma's. I made this heart for you, said Heather, because I love you. And I love you too, said Mama. Might be the last page, but I want to make sure. Oh, one more. Ma! Called the Valent called Valentine, lifting his head. Isn't that an amazing story? I know it's kind of sad at the beginning. When Heather had to say bye-bye to Mama, and then they find this lamb that is not doing well, but didn't he have a wonderful ending? Yeah, they were able to help the animal, and Heather was able to feel like she was needed, and Mama got home, and Heather's got to give her the cookie that she made. So I love this story. It's the first time I've read it. And oh my goodness, I love it. So I hope you enjoyed it too. I am going to say goodbye for the weekend. And I will see you on Monday for the 100th day of school. Bye-bye. <laughs>